Magic Tree House, Book Seven, Sunset of the Saber Tooth, Chapter One, The M Things. Let's go to the tree house," said Annie. She and Jack were passing the Frog Creek Woods on their way home from their swimming class at the Y. "No, I want to go home and change out of my bathing suit," said Jack. "Oh, that'll take too long," said Annie. "Don't you want to save Morgan as soon as possible?" "Of course," said Jack. "Then come on before the sun sets." Said Annie. She darted into the woods. Jack sighed. He gave up on the idea of changing out his bathing suit. He pushed his glasses into place. He followed Annie into the Frog Creek woods. The warm air smelled fresh and green. He moved through patches of sunlight and shadow. Soon. He came to a small clearing. He looked up. There it was—the magic tree house in the tallest tree in the woods. "Hurry!" called Annie. She was climbing the rope ladder up to the tree house. Jack grabbed the ladder. He started up after her. Finally, they reached the tree house. Squeak! A mouse sat on the window sill. Hi, Peanut! cried Annie. Jack patted the tiny head. Sorry, we didn't come sooner, Annie said. But we had to go to our swimming lesson. Squeak! What happened while we are gone? asked Annie, looking around the tree house. Jack stared at the large M carved into the wooden floor. On the M were a moonstone and a mango. The special things they'd found on their last two journeys. Hey, guess what? said Jack. Moonstone and mango start with the letter M, just like Morgan. You're right, said Annie. I bet all four things start with an M, said Jack. Right, said Annie. I wonder where we'll find the next one. She and Jack stared at the stacks of books. In the tree house, books on the Amazon rainforest, ninjas, pirates, mummies, knights, and dinosaurs. All of them were closed. Only one book lay open in the corner. We're just about to find out," said Jack. They walked over to the open book. They looked at the page the book was open to. It showed the picture of rocks and snow. Wow," said Annie, running her finger over the picture. "I love snow. I wish we could go there right now." "Wait," said Jack. "We're not prepared." Then he had another thought. "And we're wearing our bathing suits. Stop." "Oops," said Annie. Too late. The wind started to blow. The leaves started to shake, the tree house started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was silent. It was as silent as the falling snow. Chapter Two, Bones. Jack, Annie, and Peanut looked outside. Snow was falling from a gray sky. The tree house was in the tallest tree in a grove of tall, bare trees. The grove was on a wide, white plain. Beyond the plain were high, rocky cliffs. "I'm cold," said Annie. Her teeth chattered. She wrapped her towel tightly around her. Sk- squeak! Pina sounded cold too. Poor mouse," said Annie. "I'll put you into Jack's pack. You'll be warmer there." Annie slipped Peanut into the pocket of the backpack. "We have to go home," said Jack. "We need warmer clothes." "We can't go home," said Annie. "We can't find the Pennsylvania book. Not until our mission is complete. Remember?" 
That's the way the magic works. All right, said Jack. He looked around. There was no sign of the Pennsylvania book that always took them home, and he peered out the window again. Where are we anyway? She asked. I'll find out," said Jack. He picked up the open book and read the title on the cover: "Life in the Ice Age." "Ice Age," said Annie. "No wonder we're cold." "We better find the third ending soon," said Jack. "Before we freeze to death." "Look," whispered Annie. "People," she pointed out the window. Jack saw them too. Four fingers on a cliff, two big figures and two little ones, all holding long spears. Who are they? said Annie. I'll look in the book, said Jack. He found the picture of some people. He read the caption to Annie. Early modern humans were called Cro-Magnons. During the late Ice Age in Europe, they sometimes lived in caves beneath cliffs. Why are they carrying spears? said Annie. Jack turned the page. He found another picture of the Cro-Magnons. He read aloud. The Cro-Magnon family often hunted together. They covered the deep pits with branches. Then they drove reindeer and mammoth into the traps. Oh, trapping the animals! That's sad," said Annie. "No, it's not," said Jack. "They couldn't live without hunting. They didn't have supermarkets, you know." They watched the family disappear over the other side of the cliff. "Come on, I'm freezing," said Jack. "Let's hurry and find the amphing while the Cro-Magnons are hunting." "But I want to meet them," said Annie. "Forget it." Said Jack, "They don't have books that tell them about us. They'll think we're some enemy and hurl their spears." "Yikes!" said Annie. Jack put his book away. Squeak! Peanut peeked out of the backpack. "Stay in there," said Annie. Jack pulled on his pack and started down the rope ladder. Annie followed. On the icy ground, they huddled together. The wind was biting. Jack put his towel over his head. Snow blew against his glasses. "Hey, Jack," said Annie. "Look at me." Annie had to put on her swimming goggles. "Now I can see," she said. "Good thinking," said Jack. "Now cover your head with your towel. Most of your body heat is lost through your head." Annie wrapped her towel around her head. We should find a cave or some place warmer," said Jack. "I bet there are caves in those cliffs," said Annie. She and Jack started across the wide plain. The snow wasn't deep yet, but the wind was blowing hard. "I told you," Annie pointed to an opening in the rocks, a cave. They ran to it. "Careful," said Jack. They stepped carefully into the shadowy cave. It was only slightly warmer inside, but at least the wind doesn't blowing. In the gray light, they stamped the snow off their sneakers. Annie took off her goggles. It smells in here," said Jack. "Yeah, like a wet dog," said Annie. "Let me see what I can find out," said Jack. He pulled out the Ice Age book. "I'll look around," said Annie. Maybe the M thing is here. Then we can go home and get warm. Jack stood by the entrance so he could read the book. This cave is filled with sticks, Annie said. What? said Jack. He didn't look up from the book. No, wait. I think they are bones, said Annie. Bones? Echoed Jack. Yeah, lots of them back here. All over the floor, Jack turned the pages of his book. He found a picture of a cave filled with bones. I hear something," said Annie. Jack read the writing below the picture of the cave. It said, "The great cave bears of the Ice Age were over eight feet tall. 
these bears were larger and fiercer than today's grizzlies. Their caves were filled with the bones of their ancestors. Annie! whispered Jack. Get back here now! They were in the cave of a great cave bear. Chapter 3 Burr. Annie! whispered Jack again. No answer. He put his book quietly into his pack. He stepped deeper into the cave. Annie! he said a little louder. Jack stepped on the bones. The wet dog smell grew stronger. He kept going, deeper into the smelly blackness. He ran into something. He gasped. Jack! said Annie. Is that you? Didn't you hear me calling? Jack whispered. We have to get out of here. Wait, she said. Someone's sleeping back there. Hear him snoring? Jack heard a low, deep moaning. It was loud, then soft, loud, then soft. That's not a person, he said. It's a great cave bear. A booming snore shattered the air. Yikes, said Annie. Go, go, said Jack. He and Annie ran through the cave, over the bones, and out into the falling snow. They kept on going. They ran between fallen rocks and under jagged cliffs. Finally, they stopped and turned around. All they could see was snow and rocks and their own footprints. No bear. Phew, said Annie. That was lucky. Yeah, said Jack. He probably never even woke up. We just got in a panic. Annie huddled close to Jack. Brr, I'm fr freezing, she said. Me too, he said. He took off his glasses to wipe off the snow. The cold wind blew against his bare legs. Wow, Annie said. Look, she pointed to something behind Jack. What? Jack put his glasses back on and turned around. Under the cliff was a wide ledge. Under the ledge was another cave. Only this cave seemed to have a golden glow. This one looked cozy and safe and warm. Chapter 4 Grave Kids Jack and Annie crept to the cave and peeked inside. A small flame danced from a bed of glowing coals. Near the fire were knives, axes, and hallowed out stones. Animal skins were neatly stacked against the wall. People must live here, said Annie. Maybe it's the home of the Cro-Magnons we saw, said Jack, looking around. Let's go inside and get warm, said Annie. Jack and Annie moved quickly to the fire and warmed their hands. Their shadows danced on the stone walls. Jack pulled out his Ice Age book. He found a picture of a cave. He read, Cromagnus made many things from animals, plants, and stone. They made flute-like musical instruments from mammoth's bones. They made ropes by braiding plant fibers. They made axes and knives from stone. Jack pulled out his notebook and pencil. He started a list. Cromagnus made bone flutes, plant ropes, stone axes, and knives. Ta-da! said Annie. Jack looked up. Annie was wearing a coat. It had a hood and long sleeves. It went all the way down to her sneakers. Where did you get that? said Jack. From that pile of furry skins, said Annie, pointing. These must be their clothes. Maybe they're being mended. She picked up another coat and handed it to Jack. Try one. It's really warm, she said. Jack put his backpack and towel down on the hard dirt floor. Slipped on the coat. It did feel very warm and soft. 
We look like cave kids," said Annie. "Squeak!" Peanut peeked out of Jack's pack lying on the floor. "You stay in there," said Annie. "There's no teeny coat for you." Peanut vanished back into the pack. "I wonder how they made these coats," said Jack. He turned the pages in the book until he found the picture of a Cro-Magnon woman sewing. He read. Cromagnon scraped reindeer skins with flint rocks to make them soft. They used bone needles to saw the skins together for clothing. Jack added to his list: reindeer skin clothes. I hope the cave people won't mind if we borrow their coats," said Jack. "Maybe we should give them our towels," said Annie, "to thank them." Good idea. And my goggles too," said Annie. They left their gifts on top of the rest of the animal skins. "Let's explore the cave before they come home," said Jack. "It's too dark in the black," said Annie. "We won't be able to see anything." "I'll find out how Cro-Magnon saw in the dark," said Jack. He opened the Ice Age book. He found a picture of cave people. Holding odd-looking lamps, he read aloud to Annie. Cromagnons made stone lamps. They hollowed out a rock, filled it with animal fat, then burned a wick made from moss. There," said Annie. She pointed to two stones near the fire. In the hollow of each was gooey white stuff and a pile of moss. We have to be careful," said Jack. He picked up one stone. It was smaller than a soup bowl, but much heavier. Jack held the stone close to the fire and lit the piece of moss. He lit another lamp and gave it to Annie. "Carry it with two hands," he said. "I know," she said. Jack tucked the book under his arm. He and Annie carried their stone lamps. To the back of the cave. Hey, I wonder where this goes," said Annie. She held her lamp up to an opening in the wall. "I'll check in the book," said Jack. He put down his lamp and flipped through the Ice Age book. "I think it's a tunnel," she said. "Be right back." "Wait a second," said Jack. Too late. She had squeezed into the opening and was gone. Oh, brother," said Jack, sighing. He closed his book and peeked into the opening. "Come back here," he said. "No, you come here," said Annie. Her voice sounded far away. "You won't believe this." Jack picked up his lamp and book. He ducked into a small tunnel. "Wow!" came Annie's voice. Jack could see her lamp. Flickering at the other end, crouching down, he hurried toward her. At the end of the tunnel was a huge cavern with a high ceiling. Annie held her lamp close to the wall. "Look," she said. Her voice echoed. Animals were painted on the wall in strokes of red and black and yellow. There were cave bears and lions, elk. And reindeer, bison, and woolly rhinos, and mammoths. In the flickering light, the prehistoric beasts looked alive. Chapter Five: Snow Tracks. Wow! What is this place? said Jack. Maybe it's an art gallery, said Annie. I don't think so, said Jack. It's too hard to get to. He read about the cave paintings. These Ice Age beasts were painted twenty-five thousand years ago. Cro-Magnons painted pictures of animals they hunted. They may have believed the paintings would give them power over the animals. Wow! Look at this," said Annie. She pointed at a painting farther down the wall. It showed a figure with human arms and legs, reindeer antlers, and an owl face. It seemed to be holding a flute. 
Jack looked at the book again. He found a picture of the figure and read, "Caveman may have been led by a sorcerer or master of the animals. He may have worn reindeer antlers so he could run like a reindeer, and an owl mask so he could see like an owl." "What is it?" said Annie. "The master of the animals," said Jack. "He's the sorcerer." "Oh wow!" Breathed Annie, "That's it. That's what. That's who we have to find. Why? Maybe he's a friend of Morgan's," said Annie. Jack nodded slowly. "Maybe," he said. "Let's go find him," said Annie. They went back through the tunnel into the first cave. "We better put our lamps back," said Jack. He and Annie blew out their lamps. They placed them back by the fire. Jack's backpack was on the floor next to the skins. He put the Ice Age book into it. "How's Peanut?" said Annie. Jack looked into his pack. "She's not here," he said. "Oh no!" cried Annie. "She must have crawled out when we were looking at the paintings." "Peanut!" Jack called. "Peanut!" called Annie. Annie walked slowly around the cave, looking into the shadows. Jack peered around the fire and under each of the furry skins. "Jack, come here," said Annie. She was standing near the entrance to the cave. The snow had stopped falling. In the snow were tiny tracks.